here I'm going to go through what you need to know about batteries. And so to start with, I have a 9 volt battery here. What you want to start with for batteries is just have a vague understanding that the point of a battery is to create electricity. And really what we're trying to do in a battery is we're trying to get electrons to move from one side to the other and allow it to be intercepted. So here, the electrons are moving from this yellow clip all the way through this motor. And by going through that motor, when I hook it up to the other end, I can get this to do different things from that electrical energy flow. Okay, so the point I'm trying to do is I'm trying to make a construction where I can get electrons flow from one side to another. Now that's convenient because here we're going through and we're looking at redox reactions. And redox, very similar to batteries, or the same, is a chemical reaction where electrons are moved from one thing to another. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to engineer a redox reaction where part of it occurs on one side, part of it occurs on another side, so that I can separate them with a wire allowing electrons to flow from one side to another. I'm trying to make a, a, an ability for electrons to flow over to one end. Now, when you're going through batteries, what you want to start with is you want to start with reduction potentials. And reduction potentials come off of a list like this. This is your starting point for where you're going to start analyzing a battery. What chemicals am I using? This will list how good things are at pulling or, or giving up an electron. Uh, and in the sense of a battery, not in the sense of a bond like electronegativity, although you'll see a lot of overlap between the two. Things with really negative voltages um, are the, the products of those are very good at giving up electrons. And then things with very positive voltages are very good at taking electrons from things. So based off of the number of protons they have and the number of electrons repelling and shielding and all of that, this has been determined for you through this list. So what you want to start by doing is figure out what two things you have. So let's say you construct a battery out of aluminum, which according to my list here has a reduction potential of negative 1.66 volts. And let's say you construct that with a nickel battery. And the nickel battery has a voltage of negative 0.26 volts. The first thing you want to do is you want to pick these two things out. You want to take the one that's smaller, and more negative means smaller, and you want to reverse that. All of these are set up as reductions, and in order for a battery to work, or really a redox reaction to work, you need one thing to be reduced and the other thing to be oxidized. You can't have something gain electrons if something else isn't losing them. And so we need both of these to occur, and we're going to flip-flop one of these. When we flip-flop them, the sign on the voltage is going to reverse. So if we do that to the smaller one, will add up to end up with a positive total. And that'll basically mean that our battery is going to function and work without us doing anything externally to it. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to reverse the aluminum reaction and make this from a negative to a positive and keep this one as is. From that point forward, you've essentially set the base for how you're going to figure out everything else about the battery. So if we go ahead and construct this battery, we have aluminum and nickel. Let's go ahead and go ahead and work through what this will look like. So the aluminum on my sheet is written like this, and it says that it's a negative 1.66 volts. We're going to go ahead and reverse that to make this into an oxidation, and that's going to be our oxidation. And when we do that, the electrons are traveling in the reverse direction, which changes the voltages some. Now the other part, the nickel, was a negative 0.26 volts. We're going to keep that as written. So nickel is going to be reduced to nickel metal, and that was a negative 0.26 volts. This, right here in black, is essentially what's going to happen. On one side of your battery, aluminum metal is going to turn into aluminum ions. So three electrons are coming off of each aluminum atom, and then they're going to go over to their side where the nickel ions are going to pick up those electrons and turn into nickel. Now, at a very large difficulty, you need to understand the difference between this and this. You need to know what the difference is between this and this. These are both aluminum atoms, but this one is missing three electrons. This one has 10 electrons, this one has 13. This has, oh goodness, 28 electrons, this one has 26. So electrons are moving between these two different things. What we're going to do is we're going to construct this where we have on one side an aluminum side. We're going to have an aluminum solution with aluminum ions, and we're going to have a big chunk of aluminum as our electrode. On the other side, we're going to have nickel, where we have a big metal strip of nickel, and then nickel ions in solution. Then we're going to connect the two with a wire, 
and electrons are going to flow from one side to the other. We can figure out a whole bunch of stuff from this construction here. I know that the aluminum loses the electrons, so the electrons have to be flowing down the wire over here towards the nickel. Okay? The nickel then picks those electrons up, and then the nickel turns into the nickel metal. As this reaction goes on, there's a whole bunch of things that you want to be able to identify. So let's go ahead and look at what some of those things are. You want to be able to write the overall reaction, figure out the half reactions, tell me what's oxidized, what's reduced, what the oxidizing agent, reducing agents are, where the cathode is, where the anode is, the electrode that gets bigger, the electrode that gets smaller, the solution that increases in concentration, and then what happens with the salt bridge, what direction the electrons go, and the total voltage. There are probably a couple other things, but let's go through that one by one. Figure out the overall reaction, we're going to have to combine these two half reactions, so we're going to have to get the charge to work. So we're going to double this one and triple this one, and we're going to end up with this. Three nickel ions plus two aluminum atoms becomes two aluminum ions and three nickel atoms. Our half reactions are this and this. Now, our voltage we get by combining the two voltages of the two. So 1.66 minus 0.266, we're adding that up, and we would expect that under standard conditions, we would have 1.40 volts. Let's go back for a little bit. That takes care of the overall reaction, the half reactions. And then that takes care of the voltage. Now let's go through and look at oxidizing and reducing. So oxidation is when something loses electrons, it's when its oxidation number gets larger. So this is our oxidation. The aluminum is oxidized to become aluminum 3 plus. Whatever is oxidized is your reducing agent because it is the agent by which something else gets reduced. So the nickel gets reduced courtesy of the aluminum. Okay? Wherever the oxidation occurs, that electrode, the metal piece on that side, is called the anode. Okay? For the other one then, the nickel ion is being reduced to nickel metal. The nickel ion is your oxidizing agent. I'm going to abbreviate that, even though it should be oxidizing. And the electrode where that reaction occurs is called the cathode. Now, there are a couple little things to help you remember things. Wherever the reduction occurs is the cathode. You can remember the words red cat. Wherever the oxidation occurs is the anode. You can remember anox. And then let's go back and cross off a little bit more. Whatever is oxidized, whatever is reduced, oxidizing agent, reducing agent, cathode, and anode. Now, What's actually happening in our reaction? The aluminum is becoming aluminum ions, which means that this strip of aluminum is turning into these aluminum ions in the solution. So over time, this electrode is going to decrease in mass, and the concentration of aluminum ions is going to increase. While over here, here the nickel ions are turning into nickel metal. So the nickel is going to increase in mass, and the nickel ions are going to begin to get used up. And they're going to decrease in concentration. Okay. Now we've also left out the salt bridge in all of this. So the problem with our battery as is, if we have electrons flowing from one side to the other, we're going to build up negative charge on one side and not on the other. So let's go through. I'm going to delete the whole thing here. And let's just kind of recap this back to here. Here's an electrode, here's an electrode. Let's put a wire between them. So let's say that electrons are flowing in this direction. I don't remember what I drew where. But as that happens, I'm going to build up a negative charge over in this beaker. And this one's losing electrons, so it will build up positive charge. Which means that shortly after this starts, you're pushing electrons towards a negative charge away from a positive charge. Which doesn't make any sense, and that's not going to function. So what we need is we need some way to balance the charge and keep that balanced. We do that in the form of a salt bridge, which is literally just kind of a tube that's a bridge between the two filled with some kind of salt slurry. So let's put potassium nitrate in there. And the whole thing is filled with that. As the electrons flow this way, the cation from that, in this case potassium ions, is going to flow out of here 
into here so that the positive charge counterbalances that excess negative charge. The nitrate ions are going to flow into this beaker to counterbalance the fact that I'm losing electrons, I need to pick up some negative charge. Now something that's convenient for that is that means that the anions are flowing to the anode where you're losing electrons in the oxidation. The cations from your salt bridge are flowing towards the cathode where we're picking up electrons and reduction is occurring. Okay, if we go back then and look, electrode that gains in mass we've covered, the solution that increases in concentration, cation flow from the salt bridge, anion flow. The last thing is the electron flow. Now, the electrons will always flow from your anode to your cathode because anode is oxidation, you're losing the electrons there. They're flowing to the cathode where the reduction is occurring and you're gaining the electrons. Okay, so we're gaining electrons, we're having reduction over here, we're losing electrons, oxidation is occurring over here. And so, the electrons will always flow in that direction. You can also kind of infer that from the different reactions that are going on. So in this case, we have the aluminum being oxidized. And so the electrons are products of that reaction. Whereas on the other side, we were doing nickel. And that is combining with electrons, so it's gaining those electrons. So I have to be producing them from this side on the aluminum. And then the electrons have to flow from this to over to this side in order to be gained by the nickel ions in solution. Uh, and so that's why the directionality of that is what it is. Now, a side note that you might not get into in your class is that the direction of current is assigned by the flow of positive charge because in physics we chose poorly. Uh, and so current technically flows in the other direction. Um, so your source of electrons is your negative terminal of your battery and the other side is the positive terminal. Uh, so your current flows from positive to negative, your electrons would flow in the opposite direction, from your negative to your positive. Now let's recap, that's a lot of stuff that you need to understand. I think that the best way to tackle doing batteries is to start by doing a couple sample problems like this, and really, to be able to go through and just start by looking at this, figuring out which one will flip, which one won't, figuring out your voltage, and then looking chemically at what happens based off of that flip to figure out a lot of these, what's being oxidized, what's being reduced. A nice little cheat is that you know everything on here is a reduction potential. So all of these are examples of reduction. So the one you don't flip is reduced, it's your cathode, it's your oxidizing agent. The one you do flip, the product of that is oxidized, it's your reducing agent, and it's going to occur at your anode. Okay? That's the basic rundown of how a battery works. And the idea then is that electrons have to go from one side to the other, and I can intercept them in the middle, and I can hook something into here to prevent them from flowing directly across that path, and instead go through and power my motor before coming back over here, and I can break that line there, and then I can end up getting electricity from that. Okay?